I'm here at the confluence of the Mississippi and the St. Croix River in southwest Wisconsin. And so to the left there, you've got the actual Mississippi River coming in from Minnesota. And on the right here is the St. Croix River, which divides Minnesota and Wisconsin from Prescott, Wisconsin, north. What's really interesting about this location, as you'll see in this drone footage, and I hope it's good light today to see this, you can definitely see it from an airplane even higher, is that the Mississippi River is actually a brown river, and the St. Croix River is actually a blue river. And that's because these two rivers were actually formed into separate positive electric discharges. And those positive electric discharges are what we're going to talk about in this video today. Welcome to Cataclysm 27.3, the positive electric discharge, a memoristic event. One early piece of evidence that screamed electric cataclysm were the substantially obvious similarities between Lichtenberg figures of lightning and the rivers of the world. Much to my surprise, I found artists using the exact same forces in the exact same manner. When this positive electric discharge of a Lichtenberg artwork is overlaid to the ground scarring created in a positive discharge of the cataclysm, we can begin to appreciate the ease of classifying our rivers. What I am saying is that we know exactly how our rivers formed. Every last one of them. Here's a chap who will explain the exact science behind their creation. These black fractal-like patterns burned into the surface of this wood are called Lichtenberg figures. They're created by painting the surface of wood with a conductive solution of sodium bicarbonate and then applying 10,000 volts of electricity across the now partially conductive surface. As the high voltage electricity is discharged through the insulating wood, the electric field causes a physical breakdown of the bonds between the atoms in the insulator. This creates a conductive path for free electrons to flow. The flowing current heats the wood and causes it to burn. As the wood burns from the electricity, the heat from it also dries out the conductive solution. This means that the electricity will often follow one path, then it will dry out and cause the electricity to fork and follow a different path of lower resistance. As the positive discharge moved in this direction, the current moved in the opposite to satisfy the charge. This is how a battery runs out. The positive charge is now neutralized. Charge, current. How were the rivers formed? The positive discharge caused a physical breakdown of the bonds between the atoms within the insulator, or the surface of the earth, during the cataclysm, creating a path for the free electrons to flow. Positive current. The direction of river currents today are synonymous with the direction of electrical currents during the cataclysm. Positive current, positive current. We're going to take one diversion before digging in so that we can put positive discharges in a proper global cataclysm perspective. Electricity, as a function, is an oscillation between positive and negative passing through neutral. This was also true in the cataclysm with the flow of electrons into the Earth's crust and core. One half of the Earth experienced positive pressure by Venus, and like a sail, the other half of the Earth experienced negative pressure by Venus. Split the Earth in half. Positive, negative. When Lichtenberg figures are produced in wood for artwork, these two electrodes being used aren't positive and negative. They are both positive. The wires are connected to an alternating current that forms the two positive discharge figures as the current alternates back and forth at a high rate of oscillation. This same two-prong formation occurred here on Earth with one positive charged prong in the positive at what we would eventually call the mouth of the Nile River and one positively charged prong in the negative at what we would eventually call the Mississippi River. Both of these rivers begin at 30 degrees north latitude, just on opposite sides of the planet. In the positive polarity, the positive discharge of the Nile River began at 30 degrees north latitude and moved south to zero degrees, or the polarity neutral equator. Charge, current. Total travel was 30 degrees and 4,100 miles, with one tributary split creating the Blue Nile and the White Nile. In the negative polarity, the positive discharge of the Mississippi River began at 31 degrees north latitude, moving north to 46 degrees north, or halfway to the North Pole. Charge, current. 
Total travel was 15 degrees and 3,779 miles at its longest, with one primary tributary called the Missouri River. While the Nile and the Mississippi's lengths are almost identical, this dynamic changes when we measure total frequency, as the Mississippi has hundreds, if not thousands, of frequent splits called tributaries, while the Nile has just two, positive in the positive, positive in the negative. The Nile represents a direct current, positive discharge, while the Mississippi represents an alternating current, positive discharge. Positive and positive, direct current. Positive and negative, alternating current. So what happened next? What had been a direct current coming into the Eurasian Plateau on the positive side finally reversed. This reversal brings us back to the discharge that created the St. Croix River where we began and an electrical component known as a diode. As we will see in a moment, the St. Croix River formation was part of a direct current discharge that formed the Baraboo Range, including Devil's Lake in the Wisconsin Dells. In doing so, we're going to come face to face with the mighty Thunderbird itself in much more detail than any might expect. There are two key concepts of a diode that are helpful here, called forward biasing and reverse biasing. They represent pretty much exactly what they sound like. Forward biasing means the more the current flows forward, the less resistance the diode will create. In contrast, if the current tries to reverse, there is a bias in the circuit that prevents the current from going in the other direction, reverse bias. It's the electrical equivalent of a one-way valve in a water system, which is often called the check valve. The specific diode we're describing here is the gun diode represented in this diagram. In a previous video, I outlined the surface features which denoted this actual circuit within the Earth's crust forming the Great Lakes. In a gun diode, the current flows from the anode to the cathode. In this case, the cathode formed Prince Edward Island. Note the shape of the St. Lawrence River and the Great Lakes, including the yin-yang delta in the middle. I've done several videos describing the Great Lakes formation as an action of induction, which it most certainly is, and that inductance was caused by the current flow of a gun diode. Here we see the current voltage curve of the gun diode. Here we see the current voltage curve of the gun diode overlaid to the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence Riverway. Next, we'll look at it from the south. Current flowed precisely as this curve describes. In doing so, we can overlay again the actual gun diode to get a look into the inside of the event. This overhang of the current represents the tufts on the ears of the Thunderbird. And this heat sink at the bottom likely represents the vacillating whale of the Thunderbird fight as the current flowed out the top of the gun diode. It induced a circular magnetic field and aurora around it, which was recognized from South America as the plume serpent. Here is your god and the devourer of men. When the final discharge began, the gun diode did just what it was supposed to do. It choked the current from reversing. In doing so, this biasing animated here actually happened across the surface of what we now call Wisconsin in Minnesota. This clear east-west ridge of Wisconsin represents the corner of the gun diode. The current of this discharge flowed in this direction. And that's not me saying that. That's the University of Wisconsin-Madison research saying that. The Wisconsin River flows from north to south in the center of the state. And from Lake Wisconsin, the deepest part of the river system, to the Mississippi River, the river actually originally flowed from west to east, or what they considered backwards. To make things even more confusing for researchers, when the Wisconsin River reached the Mississippi River, for some reason, it turned north. In this region, the Mississippi formed along the edge of the diode. When this current reversed, this overhang on the gun diode fails. 
that's the reverse bias. This caused a breakdown in the circuit, initiating what's called an avalanche breakdown, and in this case, also a Zener breakdown. You just have to orient the chart properly. The St. Croix River represents an electrical boundary for the diode, the gun diode. Okay, Kenny, are you and the guys ready for the big finish? Off to the chalkboard. What I am proposing is that the gun diode represents the transfer of current from one circuit component to another in a three-phase circuit, the characteristics of which we see in the Hudson Bay. One, the perfectly round depression of the bay matches a negative discharge. Two, the double layer of the east coast suggests that the neutral voltage was achieved through an oscillation of positive and negative, maintaining neutral. Three, the islands in the middle show clear fluctuating energy, or flux, positive flux. Negative charge, neutral voltage, positive flux. Opposite this negative charge was South America, or the positive charge, and this positive charge, or rather positive discharge, is what formed the Amazon River. It's a giant circuit, 